Mmm. That is good. Hey there! Pop Morgan's Constant Gardener. Welcome to the OCG Fam Show to you, my YouTube buddies. What's going on? Let me know in the comments and we'll talk about it after the show. And speaking of the comments, I got a question in the comments that I would like to address. It is from Clem Zajac. And Clem says, uh, is that how you say it, Zajac, Clem? Sorry if I pronounced it wrong. Non-nectar question. Behind Scott is a drawing of four folk. I recognize Frank, Bob, and Scott. Who's the fourth person in the nectar Rushmore? So if you've watched the show before, you've seen me interviewing Scott, and he's uh, in his office, and there's a, there's a picture behind him. I guess you call it a drawing done by Cole, very talented artist that works with the company. And that picture is of me and then Frank and Scott, the founders of the company, and myself. I don't know why I'm on there, but I am. And this guy, Pig Farmer. Now, um, Pig Farmer is probably one of the most talented growers of this particular plant on this particular planet. He is an amazing man, and he embraced nectar and the whole thing early on, and not only applied his talents to use a nectar to grow amazing stuff, but also became part of the community with helping other people to do it and had a unique talent for figuring out issues and problems. And that is when we've talked about this whole thing with the alkalinity. That was a lot Scott, but it was a lot, a lot pig who had some water changes at his farm and had to figure that out. And how did he figure that out is why we're talking about this whole thing and answering that question. Nectar being a calcium baseline, a lot of it is about root drenching to get that calcium into the roots of that plant. But uh, we've been talking lately about foliar feeding and how that can be very effective because of the quick response you can get from the plant uh, when you're having issues with it. It's a good way to, to give that plant a little IV, a little poke to, to get it back going again. But also because of that quick response, it can be used as a diagnostic tool to see what's going on with the plant when it's having problems. And um, that's what the big boys do when they're, they're growing big quantity and using tons of stuff is they use foliar as a way of diagnosing. And Scott, uh, in the clip I'm gonna show you, talked a little bit about how the big farms and how he works to figure out issues and how foliar feeding is an integral part of that. So I'd like you to watch the clip and I'll talk to you after. But they can also be root fed as well. The plants eat just as fine under the, the soil, but that response is so quick in the foliage for figuring out what's going on with your plants, if that makes sense. So I mean, when we yeah. see a plant that's struggling and somebody calls us out to their farm, we bring out nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, you know, calcium, we, we bring out a whole spectrum of different elements in there, you know, and we use chemicals for this, like whatever salts. Because you can't really find just a, an organic magnesium source that you right. can pull your feet uh -huh. But we go out to these farms and we take one of their plants and we treat this branch with just mag, this one with cobalt, this one with phosphorus, and this one with nitrogen. Then we go back around and we read all the different bricks, and those one branch will tell us, oh man, I hated that much more potassium, but you know what we need is we need more nitrogen or we need more phosphorus because each branch will tell us a different story through the bricks we do. So if you're trying to figure out what's going on or fix what's going on, foliar is an excellent solution, but all things being equal, everything being fine and dandy, would you prefer to do your nitrogen through the roots? Oh, I do. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, because I can mix it all up together and it's one step less I don't have to take okay. in my room while I'm feeding. Because I can, sure. They, nitrogen is now, it's soluble, it's uh -huh. easy to break down. So watering it in, it goes fast. If I need it to go faster, then foliar feeding will make that happen. I got you. So in a situation, foliar, but day to day, just fine to go root. Trench on it. Oh, yeah, and so many people do because they just... You know, a lot of the bigger farms, foliar feeding is like taboo for many reasons. Uh -huh, yeah. A, time, labor, and uh, man hours is just consuming. Um, and then you have the potential of an overcrowded room with too much foliage, and then all of a sudden, um, you know, mildew, mold, something else can set in because you don't have a good environment. Sure. So a lot of people avoid foliar feeding in the larger settings just because of the fear of failing labs down the road. Okay, what do you think of that? Informative, entertaining, helpful? Do you use foliar feeding as a diagnostic tool? Have you thought about doing it? Uh, would you like to know more about that? Do you have comments? Do you have questions? Throw them in the comments. I love you, and I'll see you tomorrow. The OCG Fam Show. It's pretty good. It happens every day. It's the OCG Fam Show. See you tomorrow.